Okay, and welcome back to my YouTube channel, Going Places with Abu Maika. In this video, I'm going to be talking about one of the exciting rites of passage for new immigrants in Canada, which is getting your first car. So this is something that can be pretty exciting, you know, to be able to drive your own car in a new country. Uh, so I will talk about, you know, issues that you have to be aware of uh, as a new car owner in Canada. And somebody asked me in the comments, I mean, in the in the emails, uh, whether um, you know you need an all-wheel drive vehicle, you know, for driving in snow and things like that. So I will talk about that. Um, but the most important thing I want to talk about is the process, the three things that you need to do before you actually fork out money and pay for a car. Okay, there are three very important things which you need to do, which I'll get to later on in the video. But now, uh, let's just get into um the vehicle selection okay. Okay. now first up you have to identify the vehicle that you want to buy uh you can look up vehicles on kijiji you can look up vehicles on facebook marketplace cargurus.ca and also you know a lot of other sites there are also sites for dealerships you can look up dealerships in your area and um, because of COVID, a lot of dealerships would request that you book an appointment first before you just walk in and, uh, you know, check out cars and test drive them. Um, so look up your car and once you identify the vehicle, then you can start doing these three things. Now, before I get there, uh, I want to I wanna first answer this question of, um, whether you need an all-wheel drive vehicle or not. So this has to do with vehicle selection. Now, of course, the kind of vehicle that you want to buy will depend on you. I mean, um, are you a heavy user? Of, are you, are, are you going to be driving a lot? Uh, do you want a family car, right? I mean, I have a family. I had to get that little car seat back there. Uh, for the most part, it's just me, my wife, and my son, so we don't need a big car. We've got to, we've got to share this sedan, and uh, it works just fine. So you have to consider what's important to you when you're selecting a vehicle. I mean, I'm not a car expert, so I'm not going to talk about that. But I will talk about the driving in snow part. So you have to know where you're going to be driving the car, okay? If you're going to be living on the West Coast, Vancouver, Surrey, Richmond, in BC, it's not going to snow a lot. So you don't have to worry about um, driving in snow. It rains a lot, so roads are going to be wet, okay? Uh, for that, you just need a car with good tires. Okay. Um, it doesn't mean that it doesn't snow in Vancouver uh, or on the West Coast in BC. It does snow, but then not as much as, you know, areas further inland, like here where I live in, Ed in Edmonton, Alberta province, uh, up north, northern Canada, uh, even on the East Coast, maritime provinces. It does snow a lot there. But it does seem like uh, Alberta has, um, you know, the prairies have got generally longer winters than other areas. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but but you have a longer like snow season, okay? So like in Edmonton, snow started falling around November, right? Yeah, that's when you had the first like snowfall uh, in November. And then it will keep snowing until sometimes even as late as April. So imagine November, December, January, February, March. So almost six months of snow, okay? But then on the West Coast, maybe it can snow for just a week or two. Or, you know, it would just uh, some infrequent, you know, um, snowfall. So you're not going to have a lot of days of snow. So don't worry about driving in deep snow. But... The advantage of an all-wheel drive vehicle over a um, two-wheel drive vehicle is that all-wheel drive vehicles will give you better traction in deep snow, okay? So you have to determine whether you're going to be living in an area that will have a lot of deep snow. So in Edmonton, for example, I mean, I live in the city, right? So I live in the city. And within the city, I mean, there are a lot of, um, I mean, whenever it, it snows, uh they, 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 there is a very like efficient municipal snow removal service so you'll find snow graders going everywhere you know the moment it starts to snow right so you are unlikely to then have an accumulation of deep snow you know in areas like that but of course each winter will be different i just 
you know, did a blog on my first winter, you can watch the videos here. So each winter will be different. Sometimes you will have snowstorms and things like that. But then they're not going to be very frequent. You're not going to be having snow for every day from the 1st of November to the 30th of April. No. You know, just snow like, you know, maybe once in a week or two weeks or something like that, you know. So, yeah, that's what I can say about choosing that. But in any case, you do need good tires. All season tires, winter tires are always the best um and yeah that's pretty much uh, uh what i can say about that so now let's go to uh vehicle selection so you have selected a vehicle you need to do these three things now before you make your purchase uh and you can do these three things in any order right um but they have to be done so number one you need to get an insurance code so that you know how much it will cost you to insure that particular vehicle Insurance premiums can vary depending on the type of vehicle that you buy. And then number two, you need to get the car history, okay, uh, so that you know, like, um, as much about the car's history as possible. Was it ever involved in an accident that was reported to police? How severe was the accident? What is the cost of repairing the damage to the vehicle due to that accident? Um, you want to know when the car was first registered, where it has been used any um, modifications that are, that are done on the car you want to know if the vehicle has got any liens on it like was it financed uh is there money owed on the vehicle things like that so you want to find out all of that before you uh, decide to make the purchase and then the third thing you, you need to test drive the vehicle so you need to see the performance of the vehicle for yourself okay so you need to do all these three things. You can do them in any order. You can start with the test drive and then check the insurance and then check the history. Or you can start with the history and then you test drive and then you get an insurance code. That's up to you. So how to get the insurance code, you need to get the vehicle identification number. It will be on the, usually like it's on the door panel, just like here. So it will be just here, okay? Uh, so get the vehicle identification number. It's unique to every vehicle and use that to get an insurance code. You can get insurance code codes in minutes online okay um so once you get the insurance code you're happy with it then you can look up the car's history now different provinces will have vehicle information packages like in ontario there's what's called the ontario vehicle information package uh this is when you're buying a used vehicle right i mean i'm talking about used vehicles because uh, they make more economic sense for a new immigrant to buy because you don't want to spend too much money on a car when you're settling in a new country okay so of course when you're settled you can go for a new car you can finance get a car loan and do all of those things but i didn't want to do that because uh, I, I wanted to keep my expenses as low as possible um so and then you need to test drive the vehicle so take it for a spin check out the car do a physical inspection look at the dash any warning lights um you know are all your electrical and you know components working like for example if your car has got um, you know electric seats you know are they working are the heaters working are your windows rolling up and down uh, are your lights working you know uh, trunk release open the hood check you know is everything in place um, you know if you want you can you can you can you can go for a paid inspection like you go to a license inspection inspection facility and you have the car inspected so you can choose to do that it's probably a good idea to do that if you're buying a used car uh, so the inspection will cost you between like 70 and 100 bucks uh, so it's not much um, especially for the benefit that you'll get out of it so inspectors will do like a bumper to bumper inspection of the vehicle they'll check all the main uh, components of the vehicle the suspension they'll check the engine they'll check uh, like the cooling system they'll check the filters they'll check the safety features and all of that and give you a report so that you know that okay I need to fix this and this and this. So they'll they check the brakes as well. So, and then they'll give you a report. You can use that to negotiate the price of the vehicle with the owner. Um, and, you know, yeah, tell the owner that, you know what, I think your front struts need the replacement. You know, give me a little bit of a discount on that. Um, then the car history report. Uh, so it will show you, like I said, when the car was first registered. You can verify some of the owner's claims about the car. So, for example, if, if the owner tells you, I was the first owner of this car I, I have had it for three years right and yet on carfax it will show you that uh, the vehicle was registered five years ago right and it was registered let's say in ontario 
right? So you'll be like, okay, how can you be the first owner when this car was first registered in Ontario? So who was? So you're not the first owner, you know, things like that. There was a car that I looked up on Carfax, it was being sold by a dealership. Uh, so the odometer reading was 165,000 kilometers, but when I looked it up on Carfax, I saw that there was a, there was a service done on the vehicle at 205,000 kilometers two years ago. I was like, okay, if this car was uh, serviced in 2018, at 205,000, then how come the odometer is 165? So it means that there was a potential odometer rollback, which is a criminal offense here. Uh, it's a serious offense. So you don't wanna be you don't wanna be stuck with a car like that, okay? So do get a vehicle information package. Uh, you can go on Carfax or you know get the provincial uh, vehicle information packages, um, and also, yeah, get an insurance quote. Test drive the vehicle. You know. Feel how it performs. How is it steering? How is it cornering? Braking, accelerating, reversing, you know, do all of those things. And um, then, you know, if you're satisfied, then you have to do what is called a bill of sale. So the bill of sale is what will transfer ownership of the vehicle to you. Um, in Alberta, it's a standard document which you can get from a registry or online. I'll, post, I'll just post the link here. So you download it, fill it in. Put the owner's details, the seller, I mean, the seller's details, the buyer's details have to be accurate and the vehicle details. Vehicle identification number has to match what's on the vehicle, make, model, color, year of registration, you know, all of that information. And the purchase price, any terms of the sale. So if there's an inspection as part of the deal, it has to be mentioned on the bill of sale. If there's any warranty, it has to be mentioned on the bill of sale. Um, and then once that is signed by both parties, you make the payment, the car is yours. You can pay by cash, check, transfer. That's between you and the buyer, okay? And once you pay for the vehicle, so now the vehicle is yours. Uh, in most cases, if you're buying a used vehicle, it might have the owner's plate on it. So that has to be taken off and you can't drive a car without plates. So you then have to get an insurance, like a temporary insurance cover. Uh, you can buy that uh, from an insurance company. They will mail you like, they, they, they will, they'll give you an electronic document which you can print. That becomes like uh, it's valid for 30 days right so you can use that to register the car get plates uh put plates in your car you know better you just need one which goes on the rear uh we don't put plates on the front of the car uh and once that is done then the car is yours you've got your registration uh, so you go to a registry you pay a registration fee in Alberta, it's like 83 dollars uh it can be more or less depending on when you're registering the car because you register it for a full year so if you are close to a renewal date then you just need to pay the prorated um, you know amount for the remaining months okay so yeah so you go to a registry with your bill of sale and with your proof of insurance you register the car you'll get a registration slip and you'll get uh, a license plate fix it on your vehicle you always need to keep your registration uh, slip with you and also proof of insurance okay after some time your insurance company will mail you a pink slip uh, which will become like your proof of insurance so that's what i can say about um, the process of getting your first car in canada and yeah so i hope that was useful information help you to plan for your vehicle purchase um and um yeah i mean if you do have anything that you think i wanna or that you think i should delve more into please do hit me up in the comments below you can also send me an email i read them i try to reply to as many as i can Okay, so thank you so much guys. I'll see you in the comments and also see you in the next video.